Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Today I decided to decorate some Happy Mail envelopes. Now these envelopes were inspired by, or directly copied, <laughs> from an art journal page I did the other night, but I didn't actually make a video of it. Um, I do have a copy of that one in my weekly snippets, or my sort of weekly crafty vlog. Um, I will link that below if I remember, if I don't remind me. Um, so I fell in love with the colours and I fell in love with the stamps and everything I made so I decided to make them again or use the same um, supplies and they were sitting on my desk from last night's crafting. I <laughs> know oh, I'm a lazy crafter, I never really put anything away. I'll have like 20 tubes of different paint from five different projects sitting on my desk. So I'm working on quite a few envelopes at once, I believe I'm working on five, could be a few more. So just using some acrylic paint, this pink I'm using at the moment I love the colour. It's sort of semi-translucent, but I just love the rose colour. Um, it was a paint that came with a canvas from the Reject Shop for like $5. The paints stink to high heaven. They're acrylic paints, but they have an awful stink to them. Um, but use that little tube up, which is great. I love the yellow and the pink in it. The black and the green and the red have leave a lot to be desired, the colours. And excuse that car alarm going off, as soon as I start to film, life happens around me. So just drying all these envelopes. These are great to make in a batch because when you're doing them in a batch you can, as you worked on the fifth one, the first one is basically dry. <coughs> so now I decide to put some yellow on it. This one is a Joe Sonia yellow. I purchased these from Spotlight quite a while ago and they're little, 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 little can't talk, little sample tubes because they were um, throwing them out at like $2 a piece. Um, so trying to use up this year and last year has my been, been my year to use it up and collate all my supplies together so all my paints are in a box, they're not everywhere. Um, I'm trying to use up little tubes and things and that. So I've also got a heavy body um, acrylic paint. So there's five different brands or six different brands of paint so the acrylic paints mix really well together. Um, so doing this I work sort of lightest to darkest. I probably should have started with the yellow but I did want, because the pink is quite translucent, I did want it on the base. So I'm using a gift card or a credit card to apply the paint and do all sorts of different marks. Um, I apply it in different ways for the different paints. So the first one I was doing um, like big slabs of colour and the yellow I was just sort of smooshing, smooshing. Is that a word? Smushing it on. So the important thing is if you don't want to make mud, and I particularly didn't want to make mud today, um, so it's to dry the layers between the layers of paint. So if you give them a good old dry, the colours will not reactivate and make mud, which is a good idea. If you want you to make mud, go ahead and don't dry them, but that's not the effect I wanted today. So these are A5 envelopes, or if you're in the other part of the world, America and UK, if you take a standard letter size piece of paper, we call it A4 in Australia, I believe it's called 8.5 by 11, which is just about the same size, 8.5 by 11 inches. If you fold that in half, that's what this size is. So this is a good Happy Mail size. I have used these for a couple of Happy Mail envelopes, and I do believe I had three of them left. I'm also trying to build up a stash of Happy Mail envelopes pre-decorated. Because when I do go to send out Happy Mail, I necessarily don't have a lot of time to sit and decorate an envelope, so I'm wanting to get a little stash of things together, so if I feel in the mood to send out, I've got a few extra dollars for the post, um, I can just put a collection of things together. So using one of my stencils, this is one of my wrought iron gate stencils, looks like a wrought iron gate. So just applying some of that heavy body paint through the stencil with a bit of a makeup sponge. Oh really? Cars! Making a lot of noise. I'm not sure whether you can hear them or not. Spinning tyres and revving engines. Silly people. So if that stencil's not in my store, um, it will be there soon. I do have to do a whole lot of website uploading. Um, I just don't find the hours in the day and it, it's a chore and I hate doing it and I sort of put it off and put it off and put it off and yeah, don't like it. So just adding a bit of stenciling I picked the heavy body paint to stencil with because it does work a lot better. As you can tell I don't clean my stencil at all. I would clean it if I was adding texture paste but the white, uh, just the acrylic paint, I just let the layers build up. 
and then eventually um, it flakes off or when I do my gel plating it tends to um, activate the paint and help itself clean the stencils. So how's everyone going? Hope we are doing well. We're just about, I'm not sure when this video is going to go live. Um, I am doing this voiceover just before Easter but we've got Easter coming up or I may put this one up after Easter. I'm not sure. Um, so I hope everyone ha has a great Easter or had a great Easter. I'll cover all bases. Um, I'm not doing much for Easter. Um, probably doing a bit of work and a bit of crafting and a bit of house cleaning. That housework that I hate doing as well. Um, what else are we doing to these pictures, to these envelopes? So just drying off that paint, because it's a heavy body paint, it goes on a lot thicker so it does need a bit longer to dry. But when you're working on five or six envelopes, they're quite quick to do and you can go through them very quickly. And as I said before, by the time basically that number five, you've done number five, number one's almost dry so you can pick it up and use it again. And when you're sending these to five different people, they don't know that they're all sort of the same. I actually might use these same techniques on some um, more envelopes or um, some cards. I just love the combination of colours. Something about the hot pink, the yellow and the blue and then the other things that I add to it just make them pop. Then I just gra um, grab this huge roller washi tape and it's about 10 centimetres wide. I got it from Typo. Typo in Australia, um, it's spelt T-Y-P-O, so typo. It's a stationary slash home decor slash stationary sort of art. Oh, they don't do a lot of art stuff. They did in the past. So this roller washi tape several years old. That's a film on my videos lately. Everything's old. I must get some new stuff to play with, but I'm trying to use up the old stuff. So this is getting a bit old and I love the graphic pin print on it. I rediscovered it in my stash the other day and decide to use some of it up. It's really hard to pull off in like in eight uh, in a um can't talk in a ten centimeter wide strip and I probably wouldn't use it that way anyway so I'm just pulling off um um just uneven pieces and just chunks of it. I'm using some Liquitex matte me, uh, matte gel medium to stick it down because it's sticking down over the paint and because these envelopes are going to go through the mail I do want to make sure that the washi tape will stay on the envelopes and not come off and get stuck in the machines of Australia Post. So I just love the graphic nature of that print, the black and white and all the different variations. I can't talk today, seriously. I'm doing this voiceover on a Monday and I should be full of energy, not just sort of can't get my words out. <coughs> I think it's called Monday Morning Itis. So the, some of the strips I'm applying are quite thick, some of them are quite small. Just sort of working on that corner. I still want to sort of keep the, um, well the top right hand corner for the stamps and sort of that middle section for the address. So I'm just basically working on uh, almost half to a third, a third to a half of the right hand side and a third and a half to the bottom, probably more of a third to the bottom um, in an L shape. So these envelopes can be used um, when my ladies receive them in altered art journals and different things or they can cut the panel and put in their art journal. Using a lot more of people's envelopes that they send me um, in my projects. This one's got a fair whack of washi tape on it. As you can see, sometimes it's getting a bit hard to tear off. As I, I'm finding as washi tape gets older, it either gets not sticky or it you can't peel it off the roll. Um, so it gets, I suppose, I don't know whether it would dry, the stickiness dries out um, because they're not like sealed. Basically that one's just been running around in a box so it's not, not sealed like not in a sealed container. Um, I've got a load of washi that is quite several years old and I'm finding that it doesn't like to stick or it sticks to the roll and you can't get it off. But again a roller washi takes you so long to use. 
I don't think I've um, actually used <laughs> very many <laughs> up completely. It's my goal for this year, use some of my washi up. And it's really hard to share this type of washi because it comes off in chunks. So I probably can't share my, some of this one. So then I decided to do some stamping. So these stamps are from a cheapy shop I got again several years ago. I basically like the stems with the different flowers on the top because you can position them at different heights and really get a cool look. So I'm using a circle stamping block. That's actually one of my gel plates that I cut for myself um, on my laser machine because I couldn't find a square stamping block. I've got loads of big ones but I don't have any small ones. So just stamping it three or four times with different foliage and not worrying if the stamp hangs off the bottom of the um, the stamping block or doesn't get ink there because I do go and add the longer stems with a black permanent marker as well. So pushing quite hard because I do want the um, the ink to show up quite brightly on the um, the acrylic paint and I find sometimes um, this one is a Ranger archival ink pad sometimes the acrylic paint will resist the ink if it's a water based ink and just stamping off onto my um, drop paper which turns out to be really really nice pieces to use in my art journaling as well and then particularly the white drop paper is really thin it's almost like newsprint without the print on it because it's from um, my local IGA if you're in Australia, IGA from the deli, what they wrap your meat in. They basically put, if you go to the deli you can buy like five slices of ham and I've talked about this on my channel quite often. And then they'll put it in a plastic bag and then they'll wrap it in this paper and it's quite thin so it's great for collage and I use it as a lot of drop paper. And once it gets all nice and yummy then I use it for art journaling or I'll send it as painted papers. I've got quite a collection now. So every time we go to the deli we do save the paper that um, that our food comes in. And the food doesn't actually, because the food's in a plastic bag, it doesn't actually touch the paper, so it's perfectly food safe to use. So just going through and adding a few more flowers and adding the stems. We're just about done with these happy mail envelopes. I'm trying to get better and do designing envelopes. It's just sometimes there's not enough hours in the day. By the time I make the project and go to send it, I'm just running out of time. So let me know below, do you love decorating Happy Mail envelopes? What's your favourite technique to do them? I do want a gel print on some of them as well. I haven't gel printed for a while. Then I decided to give you a quick flick through of what they look like. They're basically all the same. And then I decide they need a bit of a border. So I'm searching through my messy desk and you can see off to the sides I've got a very messy desk. So I grab out an alcohol marker. So this one's um, a cheapie from China. And I decide that it just needs a border just to ground the design. It looks so much better when I add that just thin black border. And this film cuts out in a minute but basically I've just finished doing the black borders. Um, I think I missed the last couple of envelopes but I'm just repeating what I'm doing at the moment and they look so much better with just a line of a funny just a hand drawn line doesn't have to be perfect you don't need to get your ruler out you just need to run around it with the black texture uh, alcohol marker and that is perfect thank you for watching like subscribe and do all those good things for YouTube bye for now